All right, what's up guys? Hey, I wanted to film a quick video this morning for a bunch of my affiliates. Uh, my, our affiliate program is actually growing. We're getting more and more schools coming on board, so I'm super excited about that. Um, it's our belt promotion week right now. And so at my martial arts academy, at, at my main academy at Third Heaven Martial Arts, where we have, I think about 50 people belt promoting this week, so that's super cool. First one since the pandemic. Uh, I wanted to send a video to my affiliates to just show you guys the techniques that we're going over in class right now. Um, but I have, I have a behind the camera, you guys can't see them, but I've got a bunch of students behind the camera. And so I, I told those guys to listen to what I have to say also. Um, so I wanna talk a little bit about what, what the jujitsu progression, and I'm talking, to the, I'm talking to the guys behind me, just so you guys on the camera can see if I'm looking away from you guys. I do wanna talk a little bit about what the progression of the belts in jujitsu, what I think they mean, you know, personally from like a technical standpoint, like where are people at in jujitsu at different belt levels. Um, and now this is not written in stone, and, and this is just something that I kind of feel on my own. So there's, there's definitely, it's not always like this, but I feel often, it, it's very often, like 90% of the time, this is how it is. Um, I, I kind of feel like white belts, this is no offense to white belts, all the white belts around the world watching this. <laughs> I kind of feel like white belts generally have, um, they have a, a technique in mind, and they have like, they're, they're very one dimensional with their techniques. So. Now, white belts can be extremely, extremely dangerous because they might know one arm bar and like they will like die trying to pull off that arm bar. You know what I'm saying? So they might know like one X choke and they're just like, they're driving to class going, I am going to like freaking choke the shit out of somebody with my one X choke that I know. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, they can be really dangerous thinking like one dimensional that way. They can be more dangerous than, than other students actually. Um, but, but that's kind of what I feel like in most, in most cases, not always, but in most cases, a white belt's very one dimensional. What I see with the blue belts is I usually see blue belts start to develop um, some kind of a strategy. And the techniques that we're doing right now, they, I'm going to show you guys kind of what I mean by that, where techniques tend to flow together. So you tend to get like, you know, a double attack, a triple attack off of techniques. So white belts usually one dimensional, blue belts, I usually see a double or triple attack. What do I usually see in purple to black belt? And I'm saying purple to black belt because, man, purple belts are pretty high level, you know, and a lot of black belts I know are just, man, I was way tougher as a brown belt, I think, but now I'm just like old and injured. Um, so I feel like purple to black belt kind of goes like this. Purple to black belt, and especially a high level purple belt, or once you're starting to get pretty good at jujitsu, um, I usually see uh, no game plan. And what I say by that is, or what I mean by that is, High level jujitsu, I don't feel you should go in with any kind of game plan. You should be reacting to what your opponent does to you. So where I'll have people like uh, someone's getting ready for a tournament and they'll say, oh man, in the tournament I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the takedown, then I'm going to transfer the mount, then I'm going to do that. And I, but, but in my thought, I'm always like, well, man, that's great, but you just, you got to react to what your opponent does because you, you now you're in the tournament and you go up against a collegiate wrestler, you go up against some judo black belt that tosses you. Now your game plan doesn't work anymore. So with higher level jujitsu people, I start to see more of a, um, uh, more of, they don't have a game plan, but they know so much. They can just react to what people give them, but it's really important to learn techniques in a series of movements that all link together so that people can develop a game plan to move them from white belt level to blue belt level. And once they've memorized all of these different strategies, that's when a person can now attack somebody with no game plan because they'll have muscle memory and they'll be able to just react, right? So that was, uh, you know, uh, um, I think how a little, kind of a longer talk, but I think it's really important because I get that question a lot. What's the difference between a white belt and a blue belt? What's the difference between a blue belt, purple belt? You know, there are other differences as well too. I mean, when I look at belt promotion, I also look at a person's character. I look at, um, I, I look at, you know, um, loyalty, you know, determination. It's not always like how tough they are, but a lot of it is like how, like their tenacity, like how determined they are to improve, right? Um, but, but I think that that's one one thing that is, that's a val valuable to know is that to go from white belt to black belt, you eventually have to learn so many techniques that you can link them all together and flow with them without having a, a strategy where like the strategy all of a sudden becomes no strategy. Hope that makes sense. Let's show the moves that we were working on um, to kind of start developing some of these things. I, I always teach like this, so I always teach with these moves linked together. All right, we got Dixie here. Dixie's a brand new purple belt. Got a purple mohawk to celebrate. Um, 
Chris, behind the camera, I think I'm going to have you flip that screen and kind of look in there because uh, I, I don't know if we're like quite in the frame. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, and you can kind of move the camera to, to see what, what we got going on. We're looking good. We got yeah. The good side. All right, let's check it out, guys. So, so one the strategies we were talking about um, this month, we talked a lot about you know reacting to how your opponent grabs you from inside your guard, and I think the guard is really the essence of jujitsu because you start to learn how to defend yourself off your back. Um, and that's more important than being on top of somebody. If you're on top of somebody, you're kind of already winning. But on your back, that's when you really have to learn how to defend yourself. And that's what's really important in jiu-jitsu. So this month, we talked about, you know, someone grabs you like this, someone grabs you like this, someone grabs you like this, like all the different grabs. I'm just going to do one today. So the one that we were just going over in my morning class here is if somebody starts to push your knee down. Okay, they start to push. Now, a lot of you guys are going to be like, well, no one's going to push my knee down, but they will. If you lock your legs pretty tight, they'll, they'll start to do this, and they'll, there'll be a time where they come like this. Even if their arm's like this, you can still make this move work. But you reach up into their arms, so he's going to hook my arm here, okay? Now, we got the black on black geese, so I hope you guys can see this. But this hand goes towards the shoulder, and now see how he, he brought his hips out? So his, his feet are going towards my hips, and he's moved his hips out. His hand, ah, his hand. Elbows on my elbow, his hand is up here on his elbow, and there's a real tight straight arm bar there. So we're here. Now this is of course very one dimensional. What am I gonna do if someone's arm bar on me here? I almost guarantee I'm gonna take my hand and turn it, grab the back of their head, and I'm gonna apply pressure towards them. When I apply pressure towards him, it's protecting my elbow, but he's gonna take this leg and he's gonna push my knee. Oh, and he pushes my knee. Now he can throw the leg over and create an armbar. If he goes, ah, he's got a tough armbar there. If he goes belly down, it makes it real dangerous. At any time, I feel like I'm getting armbarred here. My escape might be to turn my arm, but that gives him the omoplata. Oh, so that's how we're starting to link the moves together. Another one that's the same armbar, but from the other angle. Same armbar, other angle, is he can pull my arm like this. Now when he pulls my arm, he can turn, turn his hips out, and he push my knee, and he can throw the leg over. Okay, oh, belly down, okay, great. <laughs> All that, right, so he's pulling my arm. Now, if he pulls my arm again, and I resist, I'm resisting, now he's gonna come up and make the sweep. So, you can see we just did like six moves off of one basic armbar. And that's not our, our textbook armbar. Our textbook armbar when you know you break the grip, you turn the hips, so it's a little different. Uh, but this is one of the series that we worked on this month in our class. So I hope you guys enjoyed that series and hope you guys enjoyed my little talk about jujitsu belt pro, uh, progression. All right, thanks for all your loyalty and support, guys. I hope your gyms are, your academies are going well during the pandemic. I hope everything's starting to come back for everybody. All right, guys, thanks. Your hair is beautiful. It's pretty early in the morning for this. For Same. Me. All right, guys, what's up? So we, um, so I just finished my belt promotion at my martial arts academy. And when belt promotion's over, I go into new techniques. And the purpose of the new techniques is I try to, I try to link some of the previous techniques together, but I also want to make it so that a new student coming in it will still make sense to them even if they didn't see the previous moves we did. Hopefully that makes sense. So this series we're doing half guard. Now there's a lot of different variations to the half guard. And I'm gonna be doing what I would call like the regular half guard. Um, I'm also doing a knee shield half guard and I'll be doing a deep half guard. For this video, I'm gonna talk about the knee shield half guard. I think it's important that this is the first one that people learn and I'll explain why. So half guard position. Um, you know, you can get to half guard a lot of different ways. You might get to half guard just because you choose to put your opponent in half guard. You might be regarding. Um, maybe, you know, your opponent is starting to pass your guard and you end up catching just one leg, right? There's still all kinds of ways to get to half guard. Um, I think you guys are pretty experienced. You probably know that. But basically what's happening now is I'm trapping one leg. So I have this one leg trapped. Now, from here, my knee is going to be up like this. Let's just go back just a little bit for anybody. My shin and my knee is going to be up here to create a knee shield. So we're going to do a knee shield half guard. Um, how does that look in the camera? You can see me and everything? Yeah? Okay, cool. Well, from here, it looks like it's pointing that way. No, you frame perfect. All right, awesome. So now, knee shield half guard. So 
With the knee shield, I never want to have my leg here like this, um, parallel to the floor, because Chris, I'll have you, not, don't push my leg, but hug my legs. He can hug my legs and sprawl his legs back and then start to pass my guard. It's a really easy pass. The sprawl pass. So now you guys just learned the sprawl pass if you didn't know it before. If my shin's up like this, it's going to be really hard for him to do the sprawl pass on me. So try and see now he can't do it, right? And also with this knee shield is if I'm going up against someone who's a lot bigger and stronger than me, um, I'm not going to feel their pressure and their weight because I'm keeping the shield here. Where if I have a regular guard, I'm going to feel all this pressure, right? Oh, okay, good. So here go. This is just a little bit for me. So that's why we're going to start with the knee shield. And then we'll, of course, do the other variations of the guard as well. But for today, I'm just going to show the knee shield. So my first move with the knee shield is going to be a push sweep. It's not a true half guard sweep in the fact that I'm starting from the half guard, but I'm maneuvering my body um, to more of an open guard. So the way I make this work is once I have the knee up, I take this leg. I hurt my leg like two days ago. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. It's hard for me to move my leg. I can do it though. So I bring my leg up like this. And now I can do a push sweep here, or I can do like more of like a scissor sweep. And the way that I make that work is I pull his arms to bring his weight off of his hips, and then I catch the sweep and go to the top. Okay, so now I'm choosing to do more of a scissors motion. And the reason I'm doing a scissors motion is I, I, hurt, my, I hurt my leg. I hurt my leg skateboarding, <laughs> actually for real life. I, I fell off a big half pipe. I'm, I'm gonna keep skating though. I'm trying to get skinny doing that. Um, but anyways, from here, I feel cramped to push this, but a lot of people will like that push more, but I'm going here for now. But look at what happens. Oftentimes, when I try the sweep, they'll take that arm and put it down for base. Okay, so I'll uh, have you go right to your elbow. Oh yeah, like this is perfect. So if I get somebody down like that and that angle, basically, man, I have like all of the awesomeness of jujitsu at my disposal. So what's happening here is I've, I've put him off base and I've created an angle. And if you can combine those two things, you can take someone off their base and create an angle at, a, at the same time, it's gonna open you up for tons of sweeps and tons of submissions. So I think we need to turn this way just a little bit for them to see this, right about here, I think, okay? So now when I come here for the sweep, my intention is to sweep him, but if he bases, I go back to all the previous moves we just did. So I can take my leg out and I can make a triangle choke, okay? I can take this arm and keep it on my hip and I can throw my leg over and I can start to make the omoplata. The move that we did in the curriculum this last uh, month is just simply I can take his arm and bring it here, come over, make the arm bar. I can go belly down arm bar or if he turns his arm, I'm again, oh not that way, the other way, I'm back to the omoplata, right? Now, in this knee shield, Sometimes they're sitting on my leg and I can't pull my leg out. Or maybe you're like me and you fell off the half pipe and you can't bend your leg, right? So I can't get my leg out. Okay, no problem. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my knee and I'm gonna replace it with my arm and I'm not gonna let go of this hand. So this is gonna stay here. I'm gonna replace my leg and I'm gonna come up here. All right, so now I'm making an underhook. Now I scoop my leg back and I take my foot and I put it inside his leg to make a butterfly guard. Now I just rock back and lift, and I have the butterfly guard sweep. Now, I've taught all these before on video. I've taught it to my students a ton of times, but here, let's go this way a little bit, let's face. So even though I've taught it a ton of times, and I've, I've put it on video, you guys have maybe seen all these moves on video, is that what makes this a little higher level is we're not thinking, hey, we're just going to the butterfly guard or we're just going to the arm bar or whatever, but we're combining the half guard to the sweep, and when they fail with the sweep, then we hit these other techniques. So we're, that's what's making it a more advanced technique. And, and it's more advanced, but it's easier to um, trick my opponent. So he's sitting on my leg, I can't pull my leg out, sit through. Now I, get, I have to scoop my hip to get this opening, and I pull him off his base and lift to make the sweep. All right, so...